What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This game is uh, going to change some things. I think this is, you know, becoming one of my most anticipated games of 2024 very quickly. I think it has the potential to revolutionize the industry. The game is called Gray Zone Warfare. It is an open world survival military shooter, very hardcore in the way that it's being presented. Sounds a lot like Tarkov kind of had a baby with Ghost Recon Wildlands or Breakpoint um, and a lot of open world PvP features, a lot of open world PvE features, quests, a persistent world and so much more to offer interestingly it's being developed by guys over at mad finger games and i've covered this game before i uh, did a full in-depth rundown of the original trailer which dropped a few weeks ago and i've now got my hands on a second trailer which um, you guys are probably seeing for the first time right now this video is going live in conjunction with a trailer that is being featured at the pc game show on the 30th of november so this is the first time most of us have seen this trailer i'm gonna watch it with you guys for the very first time and kind of take a look at it and break it down but first here's some features that the developers wanted to highlight specific to this trailer uh, i'm told from the developers that this trailer's length and style are very similar to the first one all these scenes are original though and there's actually no recycled footage from any of the previous versions that we've seen and they actually responded to some of the community feedback that they received after the original reveal teaser they've done another pass on site mounts and site placement they've also added backup irons to weapons and in this latest video they've also enhanced their recoil system hit reactions on wounds and lighting. The lighting was already really good, so I'm excited to see where that's going. And then this video showcases some gameplay, including a helicopter transport across a vast open world with almost infinite vegetation and jungle fights with vegetation reacting to player movement and bullets whizzing by. That is pretty interesting that vegetation is going to react to the ballistic model. Um, very unique, something that I have not seen in many, if not any games, frankly. Um, and that's very much something that the UE5 engine is going to be capable of or is capable of of doing they've also they're showing off their vaulting mechanics over obstacles the loot system more survival stuff and you know the food system and more they say their next round of announcements to the community are going to be surrounding the lore in the story of the island itself which is called lamang island they're going to talk about their quest system they describe it as a sandbox like system there's not cutscenes or anything like that uh, but instead you're just experiencing this open world and interacting with choices and things as they appear to you so i don't know if there's going to be like quest chains or just open world interactions or how that's going to work but excited to learn more about it and then finally they're going to talk about pmcs and npcs pmcs being the players themselves uh, and NPCs being, you know, the PVE element of the game and what they do in the world and their mechanics and stuff like that. All right, let's jump into this trailer and see what they are showing off. All right, so in that initial scene, we see an operator board and MH6 Littlebird with his team. We also see what looks like their fob for the first area, maybe a safe zone in this persistent world. Our boy is running a Geisley upper once again, so that's the same AR that we saw in previous versions. Uh, and he enters his patrol by doing a press check, pulling back on that charging handle, exposing the round that is in the chamber, confirming that it is in there. And then uh, interestingly, this animation, he actually pushes the forward assist, doesn't look like he closes the dust cover, um, but other than that, like very good weapon interactions. Next scene, we see a village in the low ground. This vegetation is looking incredible. The lighting actually is looking really good. We're also seeing some different customizable options on the kit of everybody around him. Um, this is a new gun in this next scene. So we went from that Geisley upper to what looks like a Riz 2 upper, um, or at least some sort of quad rail. It does look like a Riz 2. We got that same hollow we saw in previous versions. Notice that we're also seeing those backup iron sights that were added since the previous um, version of the trailer as well. And we start engaging some NPCs in this camp. The recoil, I don't know, I'd have to go back and compare it to the first trailer to really know whether or not we're seeing a significant change from the first trailer to the second trailer. It looks like it's taken one hit to knock down these NPCs. Um, so really brutal time to kill, at least for the NPCs. We saw six rounds rapidly being fired and we're seeing a pretty good, you know, vertical uh, climb and fall on that optic whenever he's shooting. And the recoil does seem to be toned down. In the past, I, I noticed that there was a lot of movement in the stock. I think it's changed quite a bit and they've tightened it up a little bit, but the recoil does still look, you know, kind of punishing, which I think is totally fine. Seen full auto for the first time as well. Um, and then our loot system. I'm going to pause on this loot system and kind of take a look and see if we see anything new here. Um, so our boy is wearing a baseball cap. Last time they were in ballistics uh, helmet, so baseball cap, some cool cosmetic options. Oakley sees uh, a balaclava of some sort. He's got a K-Bar, Glock 17, a Mark 18 with looks like stock furniture from Daniel Defense on it. And um, 
not a 10.3 inch barrel. So that's like a 14.5, I think, but it has a RIS-2 handguard on it with a hollow backup irons, PMAG standard, standard Daniel Defense grip, a CGPC3, not familiar with that plate carrier, but very cool. Looks like it has a med dangler on it as well. And then Razor electronic ear protection. Um, oh, cool. There's a Daniel Defense 32 round PMAG and uh, then also regular PMAG 30s. Daniel Defense does make a, a weird... 32 round mag that ships with all their rifles, but I have not had luck with them because they break, but that is cool that it's included. Then two P mags, F1 grenade, a cat tourniquet. We saw those last time, assault pack, water, e-bar. So he does have some med in there, e-ballin. I don't know what that is. If anyone knows what that is, or if that's a fictitious item, let me know. It might be some sort of uh, painkiller or uh, antibiotic or something. Um, surgical kit, bandage, uh, more food, and it looks like a very much a drag and drop kind of loot system. And that's on the left side of the screen. In the bottom left, we see um, the amount of blood he has in his body, which makes me think, of course, transfusions. And we saw evidence of transfusions in the GIF that was available over on their Discord. Um, energy, which I'm assuming is um, you know going to affect your rate of movement and maybe your coherence. Radiation. So, uh-oh, <laughs> I guess there is some uh, some radiation concerns, which means we'll have to have the right protective equipment to go into those areas. Intoxication, presumably from um, alcohol or narcotics that are part of the med system, and then encumbrance in the form of weight. Off the dead body, I do like this, where the dead body pops up with a red background, very easy to see. Um, bad guy has a chest rack of some sort, a grenade, a, uh, a little fanny pack, that's kind of neat, and a beret okay cool learned a little bit there that's that's fun so we see reaper uh eating various types of food there now we're seeing this next rifle is back to a geisley with an acog he has a suppressor on it now we're also seeing those backup irons his homie has a boonie on it look at the environment guys look at the change in elevation those real tall mountains how lush the vegetation is um, just a really fun area to explore um, loving this setting i think it's perfect for this type of open world game very cool Creeping up on another village. This is the first time we're seeing the vault system. Pretty stiff animation. I'm sure that'll get more passes as they continue to work on development. We're also seeing, I've noticed here for the first time, tattoos on arms. That's kind of cool. He's wearing mechanics gloves, it looks like. And I'm looking um, in this, uh, I don't know, it's either an aimpoint T1 or a T2, but this red dot that I'm, I'm looking at where he's aiming down the street, um, that dot, yeah, it doesn't, I, I very rarely see dots well represented in games. In reality, you know, they're not perfect spheres. Um, and I'd be curious to know if they're actually modeling like the correct minute of angle for the dot. I don't remember what those options are for the aimpoint offhand, uh, but those are all questions I'd be eager to have answered. Those guys down the road seem to be carrying something on their back. Um, I don't know if we can get a better look here. Okay, they put um, obstacles in the road, it looks like. They had obstacles in the road. Very cool. There's three of them, two moving to the right and then one static to the left. Let's keep going here. So engaging more NPCs. The death animation there when he hit that guy in the chest actually looked really good. There's something like ragdoll physics mixed with animations that blend, I think are really important and add a lot to immersion and give you a lot of satisfaction in the gunplay. All right, he's busting out a surgical kit because he's hurt. I did notice that he flinched last time he got hit so that was cool and then uh, once he treats himself um, we're seeing him put a mag again we're seeing that green tip ammo very cool how that is modeled into this uh daniel defense mag pull grip on it it's aim point t1 is what it looked like big gunfight in the street and that's the first time i think we've seen glass optics this scope so that's kind of cool you get a little bit of gauzy and blur style effect whenever he brings it up takes a second for it to come into focus probably you know just imitating getting the right um, eye relief on your glass to make sure that you can see all right and you're not getting any weird parallax um, looks like some sort of um, like an EBR reticle of some sort and I didn't see what type of scope it was it was too quick for me but EBR reticle of some sort you got some stadia lines with holdovers and then uh, your mill radian offsets to the left right up and down so that's all very cool I'll be curious to see if the ballistics are modeled appropriately and my dude scores a headshot and then something that they pointed out previously um, that last kill was a player kill so if we if we play it back I'm here at like the 49 second mark or so we're in the street and we're looking down this guy he's got a this aim point and he's in a gunfight in the street and then the next frame we switch to a sniper who is another player uh, making a player versus player kill on the dude that we were just uh, looking at. So we just switched perspectives and now we're seeing a player on player kill. We're seeing a one hit kill in the head. And again, that nice um, 
you know, animation blended with Ragdoll. Gray Zone Warfare guys don't know a ton about it yet, but they are communicating a lot with, uh, with influencers and they are putting some information out rapidly. The team is well funded and well manned, well equipped. This is an ambitious project, but so far all indicators seem to be that they can pull it off and I'm certainly very excited about it and I know that you guys are too. Let me know down in the description below if this is one you are excited about. Are you hesitant? Are you um, are you nervous about it or are you uh, skeptical? Uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here to keep track of all things gray zone warfare and everything else in the military simulation and combat simulation space. I'm Control Pairs. This has been Gray Zone Warfare and I'll see you guys in the next one.